NerdErotic.com. I am back from Las Vegas where I attended the Star Trek convention, and I have absolutely no news to bring you because there was no major announcements concerning their live-action television shows. But there has been a lot of news. It came two weeks ago from the San Diego Comic Convention where they made all the major announcements, and a few days ago at a Critics Association event where the CEO of CBS said Star Trek Picard would be more like Star Trek Discovery than The Next Generation. And that dashed the hopes of a lot of Star Trek fans who are hoping this show is good. And I still hold out some hope that it might be, but chances are not looking good with this news. You know when you have 10 episodes of television to tell a complete story and you can't, you have failed. Hence the title of this video. When you need a comic book and a novel to fill in the blanks with some of your characters that you're going to be introducing, you have failed as a storyteller. Now this is part of the con that Alex Kurtzman learned at the feet of Jar Jar Abrams and Bad Reboot. Monetize your failures. It's a pyramid scheme of entertainment and we get more of it from Star Trek Picard. Now we certainly got this with Star Trek 09 and Into Darkness. We got some prequel comics with that and of course they involved Robert Orsi and Alex Alex Kurtzman. We also got some prequel novels with The Force Awakens from the Shiltastic Screen Rant, which is only slightly more Shiltastic than comicbook.com because it's not owned by CBS. Star Trek Picard will be set up by prequel comic and novel. Again, this is why Star Trek Picard fails before it even premieres, because putting agenda and spectacle before storytelling is antithetical to Star Trek. Therefore, it is no longer Star Trek. The eagerly anticipated Star Trek Picard will be preceded by both a short comic series and a prequel novel. The TV series, which sees the return of arguably the greatest captain in Star Trek history, this side of Captain Kirk, follows Picard almost 20 years after the events of Star Trek Nemesis, in which he faced a Romulan-created clone of himself, and Data sacrificed his own life to save the entire population of Earth. Haunted by an event from his past, Picard is retired from Starfleet and lives alone on his family vineyard along with his dog, Number One. A dog that won't even be in the show that much, and I guarantee you from this picture here, the only reason they included the dog because it tracks well with the 18-49 to demo and John Wick. The appearance of a mysterious young woman who's going to be the greatest thing ever and she'll probably be pretty good at science as well is being pursued by hunters kicks off a chain of events resulting in him being pulled back to the stars and with a crew assembled from assorted renegades wow i'm wondering what that sounds like it already sounds a lot like brian fuller's plot in my opinion and they've shown a propensity to steal from people in my opinion like anas abdeen's giant blue tardigrade which travels instantaneously in time and space again in my opinion, and outcasts, he returns to the life that made a legend out of him. So you're going to make a prequel comic, which I can tell you right now will sell maybe 10,000 comic books, which means there's about three or 4,000 people who watch Star Trek Discovery who will have not read the comic book. Okay, I'm only slightly kidding with those numbers. More people will obviously watch Picard, but not that much more because it's behind a paywall. So they want you to pay to see Picard and pay for three comic books and a novel on top of that to get the complete story. And when you find out what the novel's about, you're going to see what I'm talking about. News of Picard's setup material was reported by The Hollywood Report. Reporter. Of course, Screen Rant doesn't report on anything themselves. They just copy and paste from other access media sources, who also briefly detailed what we can expect from it. The comic subtitled, oh, this is original, Countdown, which is just like the 2009 prequel comic and the Into Darkness prequel comic, is a three-issue miniseries revolving around a mission Picard undertakes that was significant enough to alter the whole course of his life. But let's not include it in the 10 hours of television that we're going to make you pay for on CBS All Access. Access. More failure. The first issue will be published in November, and it'll run to January 2020. A month later sees the release of The Last Best Hope, a novel by veteran tie-in scribe Una McCormick that will directly lead into the TV series by introducing new characters who will appear in the show. So the backgrounds of all your new characters that you have 10 hours of television to introduce are going to be 
brought to you in a comic book, again, that nobody is going to read. And we will have the same problem that we did with 2009 Star Trek, where Nero felt like a hollow villain because they gave you all his background in a comic book. Like the show itself, comprehensive plot details are being kept under wraps because there aren't any. But some information can be extrapolated. In 2009, a comic book miniseries titled Star Trek Countdown, which I just talked about, acted as a prequel to the J.J. Abrams reboot movie and gave us all the characterization of Nero and none of it in the film, featuring the destruction of Romulus by a supernova and Nero's rampage against those he held accountable before he and his ship and a crew were thrown back in time along with Spock. It's possible that the new comic series, with the full name of Star Trek Picard Countdown, retells part Part of this story from the perspective of Picard as he commanded the greatest rescue armada in history. So let's not show that. That wouldn't be interesting at all. To save the surviving Romulans. Since the mission had such a profound effect on Picard, its events and fallout are most likely to be what led to his decision to leave Starfleet and spend the rest of his life Earthbound. Picard was given a perfect ending in Star Trek The Next Generation and a not-so-perfect ending in Nemesis, but he was still in a good place in the fandom's hearts. But here comes Alex Kurtzman to piss all over it, and now he's going to be a broken-down old man, and the events that led up to this, we aren't even going to be shown on screen. As for the novel, while for sci-fi fans the words Last Best Hope typically invoke the spoken introductions of the first three seasons of Babylon 5, I'll let the Babylon 5 fans have their say about that in the comments section, but this is just more Alex Kurtzman's secret hideout bad robot Jar Jar Abrams borrowing from other people, in my opinion. They originate in a message to Congress from Abraham Lincoln prior to the Emancipation Proclamation, in which he declared that allowing freedom to those over whom you hold power assures greater freedom for everyone. And there's the access media we all know and love to come in for the save. It's likely a reference to the former Borg drones on whom the Romulans are experimenting, released from one kind of subjugation only to find themselves trapped in another, spending 16 years at the hands of a people who want someone to blame for the destruction of their homeworld, since it's unreasonable to expect all viewers to read tie-in material. Yes, it is. The events that play out in the comic and novel will doubtless be recapped in the show proper, in probably a 5 to 10 second flashback but those who want to experience them as full narratives well you can't do that while you're watching anything by Alex Kurtzman there's no such thing as a full narrative but you can go on pretending in their own right will have ample opportunity to do so before Star Trek Picard begins for a TV show that's 10 episodes long that you have to pay for, you should not have to pay extra to get a complete story. But that's because the writers were incapable of telling one. That is Alex Kurtzman. That is now Michael Chabon. That is Jar Jar Abrams. And that is how they treat you, the hardcore Star Trek fan. They take you for granted. That was no more evident than the Star Trek convention where they made, again, no announcements. Some of you paid hundreds of dollars. Some of you paid thousands of dollars to be there, and then you had to pay extra to get everybody's autograph. $60 for a Wilson Cruz autograph from this guy? This dude owes me money for making me watch him for two series worth of television, especially with his attitude on Twitter. Yeah, this guy. The best part about going to San Diego Comic-Con or the Star Trek convention is meeting everybody in the fandom, whether it's the Fandom Menace or the Star Trek wing of the Fandom Menace, even Star Trek Discovery fans. I was pulled aside by a lot of people. It was humbling and cool. And some of you had disco shirts on. Some of you were actors on the show who will remain nameless. And you all said you liked what I was saying and you liked how I said it. Of course, you didn't like everything I said and nobody agrees on everything, but you were listening, and it seems to me that everybody agrees, even disco fans, that STD is just not resonating with Star Trek fans. It really stuck out like a sore thumb at Star, at Star Trek Las Vegas. But the Picard show is what everybody is holding out hope for, and I'm just telling you to temper your expectations a little bit. There might be a rally towards the end, like the first few episodes will be crap, and maybe it'll get good bit later because of Michael Chabon, and let's hope so. So, but it doesn't look like that's the case. It looks like it's still firmly an Alex Kurtzman joint, even though he is not directly involved, according to my sources. Again, that is just a rumor. 
But thanks to everybody who pulled me aside and talked to me. I didn't have any there was no negativity whatsoever. I got nothing but praise and that was great. I'm sure there were people who were giving me dirty looks when I was walking around the convention with a Justice for a NOS t-shirt on, pictured right here. And unless justice is served, I will be wearing that shirt all four days next year when I attend the Star Trek convention, if there is one because it seems like morale is down in the Star Trek fandom. I heard from people who pulled me aside and overhearing conversations that attendance was way down from previous years. Now, I hadn't gone to these conventions, so I'm taking their word for it, but it seemed like that was a big subject and there wasn't a ton of excitement. And I think that has everything to do with Alex Kurtzman's Star Trek Discovery and how they treat the fandom. Just look at how they treated them over the last couple of weeks. Again, they didn't give you any major announcements at this show. That is a big deal. Now, it became way more evident why they brought back Picard because they needed to boost that morale and everything relies on this show. That's why this is very bad news. It turns out that some of the biggest plot points from the show are not going to happen within the 10 episodes of television, again, that they're gonna make you pay for. How does Picard fail before it begins? By not telling a full story. But hopefully that will not be the case. We will find out. Everybody have a great day. I look forward to seeing you at future conventions. Thanks to everybody who came up and said hi. It was great at the meetup. We had a great time. So please like, share, and subscribe, and not all who wander are lost. NerdErotic.com, please subscribe.